be greeted Church of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What a beautiful day the Lord has given to us. The Lord has given us this day to come and worship him. To come and listen to his word. So that we may stay on track all the time. It is easy to go off the path of faith because of what we go through in life. But as we listen to his word, we are encouraged, we are corrected, we are shown the way to go. Jesus has prepared a place for us where he is. And none of us must miss that place. And for us to be able to reach that place, we need to dwell in his word. Follow the word of God so that we keep on track all the time. We are listening to the word of God this morning under the topic that says like clay in the potter's hand mold me. We shall take two readings as our key scriptures. The first one, Jeremiah 18, 1 up to 6. Jeremiah 18, verse 1 to 6. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was mired in his hand, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. The second reading is from Isaiah 45, verse number 9. Isaiah 45, verse 9. Woe, woe to those who quarrel with their maker. Those who are nothing but pot sheds among the pot sheds on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, what are you making? Does your work say, the potter has no hands? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for the reading of your word the sword of the spirit. Speak to us, Father, we are listening. Guide us and show us the way to go on this path of faith. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Like clay in the potter's hand, mold me, my Father and my God. Mold me that I may become that vessel which will bring praises and honor to your holy name. Mold me back to the original purpose that you intended when you formed me in my mother's womb. Mold me, my father and my God. I want to please you as I journey the path of faith. This is a kind of prayer which a child of God who is serious with Christianity can make. This should be our cry as we journey the path of faith. To please him all the days of our lives. To invite him so that he may mold us 
so that we may be presentable before him. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the Bible says we become new creations. The old is gone and the new has come. This new identity does not make us to forget our past. This new identity in Christ does not necessarily make us to forget our past. It does not erase from our memories what we used to do while we were still in the world. It does not erase from our memories what we used to do while we were still lost in darkness. We can still remember it. And if care is not taken, children of God, we may continue to walk like we used to do in the world. We might find ourselves walking the same way we used to do. While at the same time we are calling ourselves children of God, born again Christians. Children of God, Christianity is not only a confession of the word of mouth. Christianity is not a matter of raising your hand one day when you are listening to the word of God and confess Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes, that is the starting point. That is the reason I say it is not only a confession of the word of mouth. It is also a lifestyle. That is what Christianity is. It is also a lifestyle. A lifestyle that resembles the one we confess to be following. A person cannot confess Christ and walk in a different direction. When we confess Christ as our Lord and Savior, our way of life must resemble him. The way we live must resemble the one we confess to be following. When a person calls himself a born again Christian, a child of God, there must be visible changes in the way he lives. There must be visible changes. And for that to happen, a believer must yield himself totally to God. A believer must surrender his life totally to God. And allow God to mold him anew. As I said, when we come to Christ, we do not forget what we were doing back in the world. Yes, we may confess Christ as our Lord and Savior and ask him to come into our hearts. But we will not forget what we used to do. If care is not taken, we will find ourselves walking the same walk we used to do back in the world. We need to ask God to mold us. It is not an overnight phenomenon. We need to surrender our lives totally to God. And ask God to mold us and change our character to the character of Jesus. Where we read, God instructed Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house where he will give him a message. 
Jeremiah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to the potter's house. Jeremiah otaveza ipila mzimu aya. On his arrival, achiswika. He found the potter working at the wheel. O wana mubumbi achiko ubumba. But the vessel which he was making, pezi chiducha achiko ubumba. The Bible says it was mud on his hands. Bibili iri oba uma troo pezo andani zwawe. It was impaired. In other words, it was disfigured. Yoba iso ngo ubumbe ya zwawudi. As Jeremiah was continuing to watch, musi Jeremiah ora veleza. The porter formed it into another vessel. Mubimbi adoba apu aibumba. And shaped it to the best of his ability. Aibumba zwawudi. Then God spoke to Jeremiah and said, Muzimamba na Jeremiah ar. Can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does? Na atinga itikabe over Israel as you know, uimu bumbe ya kuita. Like clay in the potter's hand, sa bumba zwandani zwamu bumbe. So are you. Na bewe zoraro. What is God saying to you and I through this demonstration? Muzimu kori minika nene na wo nenga itumbu. Is it all about clay? Nandinga vumba pezi. Is clay that much important before God? Na vumba ndi labuto guaka muzimu. Isn't there a message behind the clay demonstration? Na au namra ezaka itumbu. Surely there is. Uoni. And what is that message? Oyo mra ezandi min. The, me the first message which God is bringing to us is that we must know that God is sovereign. There is no one above him. There is no other authority above him. God is sovereign. Although he allows us to exercise our own will over our own lives. He is still in control of his universe. He is sovereign. As we go about with our lives, we must never forget this and begin to question him. God is sovereign. He does as he pleases. Whether we approve it or not, he does not owe us any explanation. And we are also not in a position to can question him. He is sovereign. We are only clay in his hands. He is the potter. Clay cannot stand in front of the potter and say, what are you making? Have you ever heard that? We are not supposed to question God when he is molding us. And say, what are you doing? We are just clay. We need to yield to whatever he wants to do with us. It is for our own advantage. Child of God. If we question what God does. We will find ourselves refusing to obey him. And when that great day comes, you will say, Lord, did I not do this and this in your name? He will say, I never knew you. It is because Christianity is not only a confession of the word of mouth. We need to allow him to mold us and change our character. We must become Christ-like. We need to resemble his image. When we say we are born again Christians, it must show with our speech, our conduct, the way we 
interact with one another in every manner of life it must show if it is not showing child of God it is time to call upon the most high God so that he may come and mold you if not that great day will come and you will be very much surprised. Why am I not making it to heaven? Didn't I raise my hand that day and say, I accept you, Jesus? It does not end there. Christianity is also a lifestyle. A lifestyle that resembles the one we, con we confess to be following. When God is molding us, telling us this is the way to go, this you must not do, let us allow him. It is to our own advantage. He is sovereign. He chooses to love us. He chooses to bring his mercy and grace to us. Let us embrace that and allow him to mold us. He is the potter. We are the clay. We need to surrender our lives totally to him. What else is God bringing through this demonstration of the clay. When Jeremiah arrived at the potter's house, he found the potter working with clay. There is a message there. The potter working with clay tells us that God is at work in us. God is always at work in us. He does not want to lose any of us. He is always at work in us. He is shaping us so that we can become Christ-like. That is the goal of that shaping. He is shaping us day in and day out so that we can resemble the character of his son. He is shaping us so that we may become that vessel which will bring honor and glory to his holy name. Before we are shaped, even as we call ourselves Christians, our lives will never bring glory and honor to the Most High God. Because we will confess Christ, but live contrary to what we confess. And we shall never bring glory and praises and honor to the name of God, the holy name of God. And as Jeremiah was shaping that vessel, the vessel was mad. It was impaired. It was disfigured. It was not in a good shape. Jeremiah stood there and watched. As the potter was busy shaping that vessel to the best of his ability, Jeremiah stood there and watched. Not long, the vessel was changed. It was given a new look. That is what God wants to bring to us. As God is shaping us through his word, he wants to bring a new look into our lives. A look that resembles Christ. 
Somebody might say, I was born again 30 years ago. What does this to do with me? Are my sins not forgiven? Did not the blood of Jesus wash me clean? Is that not what they say? It is true. When we come to the path of the light, our sins are forgiven. We are washed, we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. But our conduct, our speech, our actions, the way we think, might resemble, might resemble that mud vessel. Do you want to tell me that a person who accepts Christ today will know how to live? The person who has just accepted Christ, yes, he has been admitted to the kingdom of God. But check the way they speak. Even some of us old Christians, our conduct might still be resembling that mud vessel. Our speech, our thinking, our actions might still resemble the mud vessel. They do not change overnight. It does not happen. It takes time. We have to allow the chief shepherd to mold us. Admission into the kingdom of heaven washes away our sins. But we have to take it a step further and allow God to mold us and bring that character which is pleasing before him and bring that new look which resembles the one we confess to be following. Children of God, it is the will of our Father in heaven that each person who is called by the name of Jesus must be Christ-like. That is the will of the Father. Churches are full. But check the way we live. When I was going through this message, I was reminded of a conversation I had with Pastor Lazarus before he was promoted to glory. We were driving here to church. I cannot remember what made me to speak that statement. But I said to him, that road to heaven is narrow. He said to me, it is not narrow. It is extremely narrow. Are you getting what this means. It means even if I call myself a Christian, my conduct, my speech, my thinking will make that road narrow and I will not pass through. If my conduct, my speech, my way of thinking is not aligned with Christ. It is making the road narrow, more narrow for me and I'm being pushed out of the road. Even when I don't miss even a single Sunday. 
I will be amongst those who will be surprised on that great day. When Jesus comes in his glory and he begins to separate the goats and the sheep and I am amongst the goats, then I will say, did I not preach in your name, Jesus? Did not many people repent due to the preaching that I did? He will say, I never knew you. Because my conduct, my speech, my way of thinking was far from him. Allow God to mold you. So that you may become that vessel which can bring honor and glory to his holy name. It is the will of our Father in heaven that each person who is called by the name of Jesus must be Christ-like. Let us go to Romans 8, 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Let me read again with the amplified version. For those whom he foreknew, of whom he is, he was aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning to be molded into the image of his son. Do you hear this, this church of Jesus? To be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly his likeness that he might become the firstborn amongst the brethren. God knows you and I by name. He called us into his kingdom. And he is aware that we have answered the call for salvation. And when we read, the word of God is saying, it was destined from the beginning that whoever answers the call to salvation must also be molded into the image of Christ. It is not something that is starting today. It is written from where we read that whoever answers the call for salvation that is you and I. We are here because we have answered the call for salvation. But the word of God goes on to say it was destined from the beginning that whoever answers the call for salvation must also be molded into the image of Christ. We are clay in the hand of a potter. And the potter is God himself. Can we not do ourselves a favor and allow him to mold us into the image of his son, Jesus Christ? We have a part to play. Although God is sovereign, he does not force anyone. He is sovereign. But he does not force anyone. God's role is to mold us. Our role is to allow ourselves into his hand and he mold us. How does he mold us? Through his word. When we listen to his word, and we obey, we are being molded by God into the image of his son. The vessel which was in the potter's hand 
impaired. You and I we have been washed clean by the blood of Jesus. But our past life, which is in our minds, can mar us, can impair us though we have been washed. And that is the part where we need God to continually work on us. Just like the potter was working on that vessel. Our past is the one that can impair us although we have been washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Because God did not give us the grace to erase our past from our minds. But he has given us the grace to mold us. That past life, child of God, is the one that can make you to become impaired or disfigured. It is for that reason we need God to continually mold us. If I may ask, before you come to Christ, how was your life? It is a self-examination. Before you came to Christ, how was your life like? Now that you are in Christ, has it changed? I mean the way you live. Yes, accepting Christ, we have all accepted him. But not everyone has changed. And that is the tricky part. That is the part that can make one to miss heaven. That is the part which Pastor Lazarus said the road is extremely narrow. It is my desire that I find myself on that road. Let it also be your desire. But desire will not help if it ends there. It must be accompanied by action. If I desire to go over to that door, but I stay here. I will never reach there. If I desire to be in the image of Christ, and I don't make an effort, it will end up being a desire. Desire does not give birth to any productive thing. If it is not accompanied by action. Yes, it must start with a desire. Then action must follow. If I used to do this, which is not right. I must desire to do what is right. And now God to mold me. That is an action. And refrain from doing it again. Because God is not going to chain me hands and feet. We are free moral beings. But we have, we must not allow that freedom to take us out of the will of God. I want us just to look at some few things that can mar a believer, that can impair a believer. So that if by any chance we still have them in our lives, we have to begin 
to weed them out of our lives. If you are serious with Christianity. We allow God to mold us. We allow God to weed out unwanted elements. Unwanted elements, these are our past life. Let us go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, read 17. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles, as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. Then go down to 21. We shall read from 21 up to the end, but we shall take it bit by bit. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self. That is the first one. To put off your old self. Continue. Which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. To be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, bowling and slender, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. This was Paul writing to the Ephesians. Who were now in Christ. It is just like us. We are now in Christ. He said, put off your old self. It simply means that when we come to Christ, there is an old self. That old self is the one that must be crucified. It is the one that we must allow God to mold us so that we can move from the old self and come to the new self. The word of God goes on to say, put off falsehood. That is what some of us were doing in the past. Some people may say this is just a half-truth. As long as there is an element of falsehood in what you are saying, we are falling amongst those who need God to mold them. A child of God must speak the truth no matter what. Check your own life. It is a self-examination. When you are facing something and you see that if I turn the truth a little bit, I will win, do you not fall into that temptation? You 
You need God to mold you. The next one is stealing. Children of God do not steal. Like, like, in, like shoplifting. They don't do that. If they do, I have not come across a believer who will go and shoplift. Have you ever met a believer who shoplift? But believers do something which is equivalent to stealing. Not necessarily shoplifting, but it is equivalent. Let me give you an example. This one of shoplifting is useless to speak about it. No believer does it. But we do take what does not belong to us. Not in the name of stealing. I don't know which name you give it. Yes, this is the name. I am just taking what belongs to my workplace. I am not stealing. I am just taking I am just taking. If I'm working in a hotel, I am just taking these towels, this linen from my workplace. But it has not been given to me. I am just buying this through the back door. Is that not equivalent to stealing? Yes, I did not shoplift, but I stole. I'm using a company's car, and I know that this is how much I must claim the petrol. There is a scale which they give at your workplace to say, for these kilometers, you claim this much. Don't you twist the kilometers. And write in that form, I have traveled so much kilometers and hand it in. Obviously, they will pay you, but that is stealing. You are making the road narrow by yourself. Just write, be truthful, write the correct kilometers. Be content with what you are given at your workplace. Don't try to add more. When you are given a company's car, and they say it must only do this and this, don't you drive wherever you want. That is also stealing. And we are narrowing ourselves. Let me leave it. The rest you can just try and think. They're taking what does not belong to us. We beautify it as Christians. I can never say I stole this and that from my workplace. I can never say I bribed. That is also not right. I have taught that previously. It is real in the word of God. Unwholesome talk. How is your talking? How is my talking? Do I speak what is building others or any word that I think of I just speak and wholesome awesome talk this we were free to do when we were still in the world but not now when we are in Christ bitterness rage anger, brawling fighting quarrels what is quarreling doing in the Christians. You said gossip. You reminded me. I had said fighting. <laughs> fighting is dizindwa. But you reminded me another one. Gossip. Do you know how Christian gossip? 
when we are in the home cell and I want my members to know what you are doing. I will never say Rufuno was found doing this and this. I will say innocently, children of God, <laughs> let us pray for Rufuno. <laughs> she is doing this and that. <laughs> then I have, I have gossiped. Can't I find a way to say, let us pray for Rufuno? If it's sickness, yes, we can just say sickness. But if it's something that is not, it's not right. We cannot go and hang dead linens out there. Can't you say, let us pray for Rufuno? She's getting off the path of the Christian faith. Or oh, just, just find a way, but not lying. Christians, do you know them? Ah, let's, let's pray for Mama Musandiwa. <laughs> I heard that the bank was repossessing her car. Now everybody will know. <laughs> Just say pray for the finances of Mama Musandiwa. Ah, do everyone have to know that the bank came to repossess my car? It is gossip amongst Christians. I had forgotten it. Slander, malice, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. It is a problem. I am finishing. These are the things that we need to weed out of our lives. We surrender to God totally. And allow God to mold us. If I harbor bitterness, if I harbor unforgiveness, I must be sure that even when I stand and pray to God, He will not forgive me. You can go and fast and ask God to forgive you. If you are still holding somebody, you have not forgiven them, better not even pray. First go and release the person. Then go and say, please, Father, go, forgive me. He will forgive you. We need to ask God to mold us so that we can display the fruit of the Spirit. You will go and read them by yourselves. They are found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. A Christian must bear the fruit of the Spirit. Not all this that I read and many more mold me, my Father and my God so that I may become that vessel that will bring honor and glory to your holy name. Change my character, Jesus. So that I can take your image. That must be a prayer of a child of God. Who is serious with Christianity. Change my character, God. I must yield myself totally to you. I must surrender myself totally to you so that you can mold me. Mold me, my Father and my God. Change my character. 